As we take a look at the screen, we can see that PRISM has a number of windows open. On the far right side, we see a window for the STL6303 CCD camera that's up and running and already cooled down. The next window to the left is an Optech TCFS focuser, which is also set up and running. Next, we have the search window, which is attached to the sky chart, which is sitting in behind. So we've got a system that's fully operational, ready to go, and we're now ready to move and actually access that first object that we want to observe. So now if we select OK, we are able to actually move the telescope to the new location. First, we get a note that says that uh, it's going to be outside of our current point. We say yes to that. And then it shows us the target area we're headed to. We say yes, we want to go ahead and slew. And the mount now goes ahead and slews the new target. You can see in the window of slewing, it gives us an update as to how many seconds are remaining, how fast the mount is moving, and so we know exactly what's about to happen. And the mount reaches target. Before we go to the autofocus mode, let's just take a look at the focus window itself. As you can see there, the current position is listed as 13.2 millimeters, and PRISM is a little different than some other applications in the sense it tends to focus more on focuser distance than step count. The step count is shown below the distance numbers, and then below that we have the focuser temperature. There's temperature compensation available, but that's not being used in this particular application. And below that we have the min-max position of 7,000 counts. The status is very key because it tells us that the focuser is ready to go, it's not in motion. And then below that we have the absolute position of the focuser, which we can change by entering any value into that box and hitting the apply button. Since we're going to be using automatic focus, we can get rid of the focus panel by hitting the red arrow at the bottom of the panel, and that will minimize it and put it at the bottom of the screen. We're now ready to start the autofocus process, and the first thing we do is we go over to the CCD camera panel and select an exposure time of about 10 seconds. Having done that, we press start to initiate that first exposure. While we're over in the panel, we notice that the CCD temperature can also be changed, so we'll change that to minus 30 to get a little more cooling and apply that. And we'll wait for the download to occur. This is an STL camera which has a great chip in it, but unfortunately is a bit slow on the download side. Okay, now the download is complete, and we can see there's a couple of stars visible there. Go over and take a look and see that one looks pretty suitable. So now we'll go to Observatory, down to Focusing Actions, and select Automatic Focusing, click on that, and then go back to the image where we now see we have a cursor with those two red lines. Select the star we want, center on it, click, and then it asks us to confirm that we want to proceed with Automatic Focusing. Once that window comes up, by pressing the Execute button, we'll start the process. And the first thing it'll do is we'll actually take a dark frame. And that's what the CCD camera is doing right now, is it'll take a dark frame to give us optimum results in terms of focusing on that star. Previously, I had already set up the step and uh, range values but for most cases, you'll find that that can be done automatically. So now we have the CCD camera taking the first actual exposure of the star, and that will then show us where we are in terms of focus. The focuser has moved to the starting point, 13.000, and there we see at that point, the HDF is sitting at 9. So a fairly bloated value, but a good starting point for building up a curve here to find the optimum focus point. Once again, the focuser moves, takes another shot, 
and we see that we're moving down to 7.1 so that we know that we're headed in the, the right direction. And now as we take another exposure, we'll see how the value further improves. Getting down now to 5. And this whole process typically takes on the order of a couple of minutes. One of the challenges that occurs is when you're doing focusing is whether or not the star will actually saturate. And in this case, I deliberately did that. So you can see it now comes up and says that we've saturated and it's going to change the exposure time automatically to five seconds so that we get an accurate result. And it will continue this process all the way through as it moves its way down to an optimum value. So now we're ready for the final exposure of this sequence and then we can see the results of this whole focusing sequence. The autofocus result panel here shows us the results of all the observations as well as the polynomial that was put together in order to find the optimum result. The autofocus graph shows us exactly how the whole process unfolded and the most important number is actually down at the bottom here which shows us the optimum position and the half diameter flux that went with it. Now that the focuser is perfectly positioned, we can close off the windows on the screen that have been used for this routine, hitting the quit button, and then finally getting rid of the autofocus graph, and our system is ready for imaging.